This is one of England's strangest series of events that started with a murder case and ended with so many unanswered questions. The Babacombe murder was a terrible incident in November 1884. John Babacombe Lee, the man found guilty of the crime became famous the world over as the man they could not hang. John Henry George Lee was born in the Devon village of Abbotskirswell on the 15th of August 1864. Lee was convicted of theft in 1883 and sentenced to hard labor at prison at Exeter. He was charged on suspicion of murdering elderly spinster Emma Kies, his employee on the 15th of November 1884. In 1885, he was convicted of the murder of his employer, Emma Kies, at her home at Babacombe Bainer Torquay, on the 15th of November 1884 with a knife. The evidence was weak and circumstantial, amounting to little more than Lee having been the only male in the house at the time of the murder, his previous criminal record, and being found with an unexplained cut on his arm. Despite this and his claim of innocence, he was sentenced to hang. Having survived three attempts at hanging, his sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. He became popularly known as the man they couldn't hang. On the 23rd of February 1885, three attempts were made to carry out Lee's execution at Exeter Prison. All ended in failure, as the trapdoor of the scaffold failed to open despite being carefully tested by the executioner, James Barry, beforehand. The medical officer refused to take any further part in the proceedings, and they were stopped. Home Secretary Sir William Harcourt commuted the sentence to life imprisonment. The Home Office ordered an investigation into the failure of the apparatus, and it was discovered that when the gallows was moved from the old infirmary into the coach house, the drawbar was slightly misaligned. As a result the hinges of the trap door bound and did not drop cleanly through. Lee continued to petition successive home secretaries, and was finally released in 1907. So John Babacombe Lee, was the man found guilty of almost hacking the head off an elderly spinster, whilst, allegedly, single-handedly setting fire to her home and his place of work whilst raising the alarm and trying to put the fire out. He was the only accused, and faced the full force of the law. With prison life and the dreadful experience, at the gallows now a thing of the past, by the early 1900s John Lee was a free man available to sell his story for a small fortune and free to fool an unsuspecting public into believing he was really an all-round nice guy and a living miracle. He married a nurse in 1909 and dumped her, pregnant, in the workhouse in 1911. The nurse, Jessie Lee, was left destitute by her ruthless husband. Lee then had an affair with another woman, the two of them lied to authorities about her identity, claimed to be Lee's poor real spouse, fled England and headed to America claiming to be man and wife. In short, Lee fooled a curious public into believing he was a good innocent person, who by fate and the hand of God, had survived the ultimate ordeal and was happily married with children claiming to be settling into a respectable simple Edwardian family life, when in fact he milked his celebrity status for all it was worth, spent every penny and did a runner. John Henry George Lee, probably wasn't a murderer. He was an all-round liar, manipulator and a darn right bounder. He used his status in the public eye to threaten the British government 
lawyers and individuals in Devon as well as certain public figures. His claims about his life were bloated, stupidly romanticized out of proportion and heavily edited. Although historically interesting, the book he claimed to write in the overlong silent film about events surrounding the murder is completely ridiculous, full to the brim of everything excluding fact. The real Lee is mundane and unexceptional. A small-time crook with a record before the murder, a liar, a trickster, a bragger who fooled a desperate lonely, broke elderly Emma Kais into believing he was special. She was a spinster, infatuated with a possibility of infatuation itself, the reality of which was beyond social and practical reach. The life for lonely Emma, on the beach at Babacombe must have been intense, almost penniless and closed. Surrounded only by her dead mother's servants and a few neighbors, some lower and others higher in class. Young Lee, a man in his late teens and then his early twenties, must have brought her forbidden light that she could in her way have thought she could manipulate. Her world, although broke, was another class altogether, his lower class and maybe his sexual brashness, was something socially prohibited and yet for an exciting challenge. Emma's letters to Lee, when he is serving his first conviction reveal the desperation of a woman, either mothering or in love with the idea of love itself with a man beneath her. After Emma's death, Lee claimed his affection for her and hers for him. But as Lee could be barely believed on any subject, her letters to him as some evidence of an affection. Lee played up to this, as indeed he played to any scenario where he is the lead character. When he almost hacked the head off Emma Kais, in a fit of pique John Lee jumped. When the gallows failed him three times, he was thrust into a world beyond his wildest dreams. By the time he was due to be released from prison, the public were gagging for him as a cheap hero. The English masses loved his so-called romance with his sweetheart, a nurse working in Devon. The marriage was a dream for Lee's ego. When the appetite for his overblown stories diminished, the truth behind Lee's unpleasantness slowly trickled out. True to form Lee lied, ran away and then disappeared back into the ordinary world, where he started, obscurity. The story was over. Lee was alive but unwanted and unloved by his beloved audience, who had moved on and away from his dodgy persona. On the 28th of February 1911 John Lee allegedly traveled to America with a woman claiming to be his wife. Meanwhile his real wife, Jessie, pregnant with their second child, had been abandoned in the workhouse. The convicted murderer apparently lived with his partner Adelina, in Wisconsin where they had a daughter Evelyn who was born on the 1st of August 1914. She died suddenly on the 12th of October 1933. The man they could not hang, John Henry George Lee, never became a legal citizen of America and finally died age 80 on the 19th of March 1945 in Milwaukee. Thank you for watching Death Row.